Thank you. Can I get the first slide up, please? Since Berkeley is uh, where I got started in SETI and met my husband, this is a really good place to come back to. Um, as was said, my, my TED wish to change the world involved SETI. For millennia, humans have been on a journey to find answers to questions, questions about what is, what should be, who we are, why we are, and of course, is anybody else there? Fifty years ago, the direction of this journey changed when uh, we developed the technology for radio astronomy and SETI, the search for extraterrestrial intelligence, went down a different road of exploratory science. Um, what SETI does is it uses the tools of astronomy to see if we can detect evidence of someone else's technology over the really vast distances um, in space. Uh, perhaps a a huge communication network or a shield against asteroidal impacts or something, something that we can't even conceive of, but perhaps with a determined enough search at radio and optical frequencies, we might discover. So within our own galaxy, there are about 400 billion stars, and we now know that almost all of those stars have planets. We haven't yet found an exact copy of Earth, but last year we launched a spacecraft called Kepler, and Kepler should be telling us within a couple of years how frequent Earth-sized planets are at a distance from their star where they might support life. And if it should turn out that Earth-like planets, habitable planets, are in fact rare in our galaxy, well, there's still another 100 billion galaxies out there. Uh, so there's, there's a good probability. And there's a new science called astrobiology, which is combining geology, chemistry, biology, physics, uh, in an attempt to find evidence of life of any kind beyond Earth, to understand the origins of life on Earth, to explore our solar system and nearby stars looking for biosignatures. So in that sense, SETI could be conceived of as a search for techno-signatures, trying to find intelligent life, advanced technologies. In doing this, in looking for those signatures, we suffer from the tyranny of light speed. It takes light a little over eight minutes to get from the sun to the earth. And light's the fastest thing there is, as far as the, we know. It takes 4.2 years for light to reach us from the nearest star. And something like 75,000 years for light to travel from where we are in the galaxy to the outer edges. And we're talking about millions of years for light to travel between galaxies. So space is big, space is empty, but space may be inhabited. Um, we also, in our search, suffer from the tyranny of time. So what is going to determine the success or failure of SETI programs is the distance between any two technological civilizations. And that's a distance not only in space, but a distance in time. We are a very young technology, 100 years or so, in a very old, 10 billion year old galaxy. So if technology doesn't, on average, last for a long time, it's not going to turn out that two technological civilizations are co-spatially and co-temporally located. So SETI will not succeed unless technology lasts for a long time. But Phil Morrison turned that around and said, SETI is the archaeology of the future. So yes, it's archaeology because it takes a signal a while to get here, and we learn about their past. But the success of SETI, a successful detection, tells us that we can have a long technological future. 
Phil was also one of the co-authors of the first scientific paper on SETI 50 years ago in the journal Nature. And over the past 50 years, there have been some personal highlights for me for SETI. So this was the first paper, the first search done by Frank Drake with radio telescopes in Green Bank, West Virginia. Frank is now uh, the director of the Carl Sagan Center for Study of Life in the Universe at the SETI Institute. Uh, the SETI Institute itself, where I work, was incorporated 25 years ago, actually to save NASA money. Most people don't do that, but that was our goal, and it's a very good idea. And 10 years ago, here at Berkeley, a group of uh, scientists took the algorithms that we were using and put them out as a distributed computing pro project. It, SETI at Home has put distributed computing on the map and launched a whole huge industry of um, citizen scientists around the world who can not only continue to look for signals in data recorded at the Arecibo Observatory, but they can fold proteins for cancer research. They can count craters for NASA. They can do Einstein at home and the Large Hadron Collider at home and, and a huge suite of science. There's a huge interest in the population around the world to become involved in science and to better understand it. So for all of that, we've been doing SETI for 50 years, and the sum total of the efforts we've been able to um, get together to date amount to taking one eight-ounce glass dipping it in one of the Earth's oceans and looking to see if there are any fish in that glass. Well, now, I didn't catch a fish. Does that mean there aren't any fish in the ocean? That experiment could have worked. Uh, the whales won't fit in the glass or the giant squid, but there are fish that would have fit in my glass. But if I don't find a fish, I'm more likely to conclude that I haven't sampled the ocean very well, rather than the fact that there are no fish in the ocean. And that's exactly where we stand with SETI today. We've taken one eight-ounce glass, and the cosmic ocean still beckons. And we heard a talk earlier about the singularity and about exponentials, right? All the good stuff happens at the end real fast. And that's where we're going with exponential increases in technology, we can search much faster, bigger glasses, more rapidly. And here, let's see, I brought a laser pointer so I can show you. Here, at the base of Mount Lassen in Northern California, underneath this beautiful Milky Way arc, we are building better, faster search glasses. This, in fact, is a facility that we are partnering with UC Berkeley to build at the Hack Creek Radio Observatory near Mount Lassen. It's the Allen Telescope Array, named after Paul Allen, who was bold enough to fund the technology development for this innovative new telescope. And today we have 42 telescopes. They're each 20 feet in diameter. This will grow over time to 350 telescopes. And it is a spectacular new instrument and a new way of building instruments to do traditional radio astronomy and SETI searches simultaneously. And it works really, really well. The algorithms that we use today can find a class of signals that are very indicative of technology, that is, signals extremely compressed in the frequency domain. All right? And even though your eye may not yet have found that signal, our algorithms find it extremely easily. So I have been thinking about how to change the world, and I was really uh, encouraged this morning to hear about the, the evolutionary old seat of compassion in the reptilian brain of humans because we have to take advantage of the fact 
that whether we're born in San Francisco or the Sudan or closer to the heart of the Milky Way galaxy, this is where we all came from. Carl Sagan reminded us that we are made out of stardust. And that common heritage is something that we need to build upon to understand how we, in fact, are all the same. We are the result of billions of years of evolution. We are what happens when hydrogen and helium are left to evolve for long enough to begin wondering where they came from. So SETI can help us change everything by building on that commonality. Right? What SETI does, even if it never finds a signal, is in the process of doing SETI. We hold up a mirror. We hold up a mirror to the planet, and we say, see, when compared to another technological civilization somewhere out there, you, we are all the same. Actively thinking and working in SETI helps to trivialize the differences among humans that we're willing to kill one another over today. So that's a really powerful concept. We need to change perspectives. SETI at home has been doing it for 10 years. And this is one of the haikus of SETI at home user. A million earthlings bounded by optimism leave their PCs on. Well, it's fabulous, a large number, and they're optimistic, but they leave their PCs on. Pretty passive. You wonder if they really get it. Does it change the way they go through their lives daily? Does it change how they think? Have they really gotten a bigger cosmic perspective? And this is what I was thinking of when Alan Stern came to visit the SETI Institute shortly after leaving NASA, and he said, you mean all the people in the world that are actively involved in SETI could fit in a phone booth? And the answer was yes. So that's why my TED wish was to have TED in power, earthlings everywhere, to become active participants in the ultimate search for cosmic company. So what does that mean? Well. We start with the telescopes, right? Check. Got those. If we had another kind of check, we'd have more of them. But it's a good start, right? And then, very fortunately, we have recently been given uh, large donations of computing equipment from both Dell and Google that allow us to do SETI in a way that can invite the world in rather than doing it all by ourselves. And we can put those data into a cloud with sponsorship by Amazon and have a lot of computing resources that can work against that. And then we can invite the development communities, traditional OS developers, and students, some of them maybe at Berkeley, studying digital signal processing, who might help us develop algorithms for different classes of signals than we are currently able to use at the telescope. And we're being coached in this by Denise Cooper, the open source diva, because at my institution, we don't have a cultural history of open source, and we want to get there. And then that's the community of technologically sophisticated people, but what about the rest of the world? I want the rest of the world to participate, because I want them to change their perspectives. And so we're now reaching out to the game designing community and data visualizers such as Giver Tully, right? I didn't know Giver was going to be here, but here he is on my slide <laughs> doing dangerous things, right? And, and the, the engineers who can write all these fantastic applications, like the one I just heard about yesterday, which tells you how many extrasolar planets um, have been found to date on your iPhone. Um, we want these people to help us to, to reach out and uh, develop a platform for citizen scientists to help us 
actually find signals for which we don't yet have good algorithms and are missing. And perhaps one of these citizen scientists will be responsible for finding a pattern that causes us to go back and follow up on a signal that we would otherwise have missed and perhaps be the first detection. And this is the last community that we have to think about because they're our future, they're our longevity. We want these children to grow up with a cosmic perspective as well. In the classroom setting, we already do fairly well. There are a lot of materials that talk about who we are in a cosmic context. But the classroom isn't where these children are spending most of their time. We have to find ways of using the venues in which these children dream and wonder and develop products that can reach them in this way and connect them to a huge global community of earthlings. That's what we want these kids to be putting on their Facebooks as the first identifier of who they are. So I'm going to leave you with a call for action. I want you to think about coming and joining us you can visit the SETI Quest site that we've just launched. You can help us do the unprecedented. You can help us to change the world. And we need your support. We need code developers, DSP experts, thoughtful citizen scientists. We need all of you. And I'm really eager to talk to any of you at the break who are interested. Go to the SETI Quest site. Tell us how you'd like to be part of this. And if you can't find me at the break, um, Avinash Agrawal, who is the project manager for the TED project, is here as well. So talk to him. Thank you very much.